Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Today we're going to repeat an example that's in the Manifold user manual, uh, which seems to take a long time in the user manual, but, but can actually be done in just a few minutes by an experienced user. Uh, Manifold's workflow is very efficient. It allows us to do uh, several things at once in uh, simple dialogues, and uh, the speed of the, uh, the system allows us to do things in just six minutes, which will take an hour or even longer, maybe two hours in some other JS packages. We're looking at a uh, Manifold project, which has uh, only one component, it has a map in it, and uh, that map has just one layer, a Bing map satellite image layer. What we're going to do is we're going to import some data from uh, the NASA Planetary Data Sciences uh, archive, and uh, we're going to work with that data. So let's, let's import some images, file, import, and uh, here we are in the, uh, in the archive, in the data subfolder of the archive, and what we're going to do is we're going to click on the IMG files, which are image files. We can control click on several of them at once, click import, and they all import instantly. Uh, these are fairly large images, and what I can now do is I can control click on, click on them to, support, to uh, select them in the project, and then drag and drop all of them at once into the map, and so they all appear in the map. Uh, to see what these look like, I'll close this uh, folder here to keep, keep that clean, we can control click on the folders tab to zoom to that folder. And uh, we haven't formatted these images, uh, so let's, let's do that really quickly. Let's style them using style. And uh, we'll do. We'll use ten breaks. Tally. And uh, these are all. These are these are train elevation images. So we're going to color them with a palette, choosing the CB spectral palette, which appears outside of the video. Click update style. And to make those look cooler, we'll use shading. So I'm going to hill shade that, and, and take. That's how quickly that works. Let's do the same thing with this this image too. And uh, here also we'll use uh, ten breaks. We'll also color it with the uh, spectral palette. And uh, we will also apply uh, shading. And let's do the last one here. This is a buckboard mesa. And what we're looking at here are, uh, click tally. What we're looking at here are uh, craters that are in the uh, Nevada test site. They're explosion craters that were created by a nuclear test site, two nuclear tests. And uh, let's hill shade that. And NASA uses these as uh, kind of stand-in models for uh, cratering events uh, to understand cratering as it may happen on other worlds, such as uh, the Moon, Mars, and so forth. Uh, all right, well, that, that, that only took us just a little bit. And as you can see, we can control-click to jump between these different, uh, that control-clicking on a layer tab zooms to fit to the content of that layer. And uh, let's see how well these things georegister. And the way we can see how well these things georegister, that is, how well they compare to the background Bing map, is to uh, go into the Layers pane, and here we'll control click to select several of the layers and I'll change one of them to 50% uh, opacity and all the selected items will change that opacity. It's a nice shortcut which we can use and as you can see here we'll double click on the layer to turn it on, off and on. That's very good georegistration. Geo the crater appears exactly where it should relative to the, uh, uh, to the uh, background map, background imagery. Uh, that, that's true for all these except for this guy here in Buckboard Mesa where if we right click and drag to uh, zoom box, we can see that uh, the georegistration here is not particularly good. Uh, the crater is down here, as you can see where the cursor is moving, and it, uh, in, the, in, the, in the NASA provided terrain elevation uh, data, where it really should be up here. Now, that's not at all cool. And uh, how, can, how can we work with that in the case of such an error? Well, we can grab the original data from, man, from uh, NASA, which appears in tabular form in this uh, particular uh, planetary data sciences archive, and uh, we can uh, use Krieging to create our own ter terrain elevation image. And uh, we can do that remarkably quickly. We're about 3 minutes and 45 seconds into this uh, video, so I'm going to show you how to do all that in just uh, under 6 minutes. So let's start by uh, importing the uh, data. And to import it, I'm going to use a Create New Data Source, because the New Data Source dialog gives me some more uh, options. And I'm using files of type CSV. This isn't exactly a CSV uh, file. The tab. Uh, uh, file from uh, NASA is a uh, plain text file that has an array of uh, numbers in it. The first line does not contain field names, and the list number is a, uh, is a s series of s space characters. I'm just going to bring it in as is. I'm going to create a new data source, and like I said, I just use that create data source dialog to, to use the better controls that are there to give me some options. But what I really want to do is I don't want to create this as a linked data source where, where the data stays in the, uh, in the file. I want to click on this and then click the copy button and then down here I'm going to control V to paste and what that does is make a local copy within my project that's no longer stored in the uh, uh, NASA tab file but is as but isn't brought in locally uh, I'm going to delete that data source which is the link data source I don't need it anymore because now I have the table in the map 
If I take, open the table and take a look at it, we see that it's a read-only table because it doesn't have any indices or anything like that. The gray background color indicates it's read-only. And it's got some uh, funky columns here that are extra blind columns where there were space characters. Since this is not really a CSV, fi CSV file. It's just an array with a bunch of spaces between the numbers for each records. I'm going to clean all that up. I'm going to rename the columns, and I'm going to add a few other columns that is alter the table schema. And I'm going to do that all with one dialog. I'm going to use the edit schema dialog. And first, we're going to get rid of the columns that we don't need, columns 2, 3, 5, 6, and 7. And uh, I'll just delete those. Column 1 is longitude, but in 360-degree uh, format, 0 to 360 degrees. Column 4 is obviously latitude. And column 8 is the Z, or height. So let's rename this so they, they're more interesting names. So we'll call that Z. I'm just double-clicking into here to, to rename them. Call this uh, latitude. And I'm going to call this... Uh, uh, lawn 360 to indicate that it's longitude in uh, 0 to 360 degree form. And I'm now going to create a new field called longitude, which also I will make type floats 64. I'm picking this off of the uh, pull down dialog of lots of different data types that Manifold understands. And I'm going to create a geometry field because we're going to create some geometry here. What we're looking at here, by the way, is a table of all the points that the LiDAR. Uh, sensor picked up and it scanned all these craters. Ma Na NASA scanned all these uh, craters with uh, LiDAR, and we're going to actually let's let's re let's call this thing Geom, which is uh, what most people call Geoms in uh, geometry and manifold. And we'll make that type Geom, and we'll choose for coordinate system uh, latitude and longitude. Click OK. And now one last thing, I want to add a add a, a key field and an index. Manifold provides a single button to do that. So there it's done. There's long 360, latitude, Z, longitude, geom. That's all cool. And we got the identity field. Let's click Save Changes. And like that, bang, we've just changed the uh, table schema in uh, one short dialog. Now I'm going to populate this longitude field. And the way I'm going to do that is I want to, uh, I'll use the transform panel. And I'll use an expression. I will take, uh, the, way you, the, the, way for, the way you compute plain old uh, plus minus 180 degree uh, longitudes like we normally use in a GIS Okay, and let's make sure the field is longitude. Uh, from here is we uh, is we uh, subtract 360 degrees. That works as long as you're in this particular hemisphere where we are in the Western Hemisphere. It doesn't work elsewhere, but in this case, we can use a very simple expression. As you can see, Manifold actually previews this so that if you make a mistake and point at it at a different field or something like that, you can see where the values are going to go. And if this uh, expression is wrong, you can see right away from here uh, if that if you're calculating the wrong longitudes. In this case, that all looks cool, so we're going to click Update Field. And uh, what we've just done is created a longitude field, which is in, in the correct plus minus 180 degree format that we'd like to use in GIS, instead of the 0 to 360 degree format that NASA used. Let's also populate the geom field. We're going to create geometry. Our target here is geom. And what we're going to do is we're going to compose point geometry using Z. X is uh, longitude, as we all know, and uh, Y is latitude. And Z, of course, is uh, Z. We just pick the fields here. And we click Update Field. And it's going to think for a moment. And it's going to create the uh, geometry. So we've now created a table of geometry. And what we can do from this table, this BB Mesa 2 table, is that we can now right-click on it and create a drawing. So let's create a new drawing. And uh, we'll just leave it as is. Let's just leave all the defaults, latitude and longitude, as coordinate system. OK, that's cool. Create drawing. It takes a second. It creates a drawing. And now what we can do is we can take this new drawing that we've created, we can drag it and drop it. And you can see those are all the LiDAR points that were picked up by the uh, Wallops uh, LiDAR sensor that was used to fly this mission. And uh, that's what NASA used originally to create the uh, synthetic uh, uh, terrain raster. What we're now going to do is we're going to use Krieging to create that terrain raster. And the way we do that is with the uh, focus on the BB Mesa drawing. I'm going to go back into the transform. I'm going to choose here, interpolate Krieging. And for the Z, and we're going to use the... Z field. For the resolution, since this is a, a, a coordinate system in latitude and longitude, which uses degrees, I'm going to make it about 0 0.00001 degree, which is, works out to about one meter at this latitude resolution. Click Add Component, and off it goes. Now, you may be thinking, OK, this guy's crazy. He's got this big LiDAR data set, and uh, he's uh, going to interpolate it using Krieging. We're going to be sitting here for an hour or two. And that's not the case. We're only going to be sitting here for a few seconds, because uh, Manifold is was working at doing this in parallel. The uh, the creaking transform in Manifold is fully parallel, as is the entire system. It's not just CPU parallel either. It's also using GPU. And in this particular system, we have a, 
Oh, about a $150 GPU. Oh, it's done already. We have about a $150 GPU card, which has uh, uh, about a 1,000 GPU cores, and all of them have, have swung into action to do that, that computation. So we've just done a computation in a few seconds, which could take an hour or two in other GIS packages. Let's see what that uh, looks like. I'm going to turn everything, the, the other layers off here, and I'm going to come here and take this uh, image, which was created using default nomenclature, drag it and drop it. And as you can see, that too isn't particularly interesting because we have yet to style it. So let's go back into the style dialog and let's style it. Instead of using all three channels, I'm going to use just channel zero, which, which is a one height channel. I'm going to choose again the uh, color blur brewer spectral palette. And uh, here I, I will reverse it just to be cool. I'll right click and choose reverse, choose update style. And then once more, I'll apply hill shading. And there is our uh, hill shaded uh, tra uh, train elevation uh, surface that we created. Uh, as promised, we did all this in under six minutes. Uh, that's excluding the time I spent babbling and commenting on telling you what I was doing. Uh, and as you can see, this is perfectly geo-registered. This is exactly what we, what we want it to be. And we can compare that by clicking on the, the NASA image. These are all both 50% transparency. As you can see one of them through the background of the other. And you can see the NASA image is off from the crater. Uh, but our image, the one we created, is, is dead spot on. So the NASA data as collected by LIDAR is exactly spot on. It's as perfectly georeferenced. It's just that it, whenever they, NASA created this uh, synthetic train image, they, uh, they made some kind of mistake, and they didn't do that quite right. So that's what we used. Uh, okay, uh, I want to point out that what we've done here, uh, in the actual operative part of what we've done here, took about six minutes. And uh, one reason it went, it went very quickly is that all these images that we've uh, created here are pretty big images, and Manifold can do a lot of these things in parallel. Uh, you can see the entire swaths of the different images that we created. And uh, over top of, you know, here's, here's one image, here's another image, and, and so forth. And they're all, they are, they're all existing simultaneously in the same data set. They're fairly big images. We can go to any one of them extremely quickly. Those are all showing in 50% transparency. That's why they look that, that light. The ability to immediately grab a bunch of images at once, to immediately uh, uh, import them, to immediately toss them into a map, to immediately transform them, to uh, do Krieging in a matter of seconds instead of an hour, all that combines to, for a very, very fast workflow on Manifold, uh, which you know makes your life easier. I mean, it's, just a lot, it's a lot quicker than when you, when you can do stuff that happens uh, instantly. This machine that working in, we're working with is not a particularly expensive machine. Uh, it's not a $20,000 machine. It's about a $1,500 machine. And uh, uh, even if you have a fairly weak machine uh, using like a $100 process, it'll work about as fast. Uh, I mean, you won't be able to see any difference. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this video. Thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye from Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.